Today we are going to see how to use Amazon Content Distribution Network that is the CloudFront as a service and there are multiple components that make up a CloudFront to work nice and smooth. So we are going to see what some of those components in detail and we are not going to see some of them but we are going to get awareness of those components because they are at once level when you want to control your access, have more logging, more firewall setup. In those cases you will need those advanced components also. For setting up a basic cloud front, just two or three uh, components is more than enough to get it up and running. And that's what we are going to do now. When you're talking about CDN or content delivery network, this is nothing but a dispersed servers which are distributed geographically over the different places to ensure each and every customer of yours is getting the best experience. Uh, so just because uh, your customer is uh, half a world across, they should not have a lower latency and the website or browser should not lag too much. So to avoid that, people put up a lot of servers in different locations. Uh, if you have, want to have a comparative on the outer world other than Amazon, Akamai is doing a fantastic job in doing content distribution and they have been in the market for such a long time. Even Azure has a tie up with uh, Akamai for doing the CDN. Whereas when it comes to AWS, CloudFront is a service and AWS has its own servers or edge locations in all across the globe. The last I heard was they have about uh, close to 100 edge locations all across the globe through which you can distribute your content. And it is once again absolutely your flexibility that where you want to store your content and how much you want to pay for your content distribution network. So and some of the use cases have been listed here. You can see here if you want to have a large amount of data to be distributed to a lot of servers or if you want to route your viewers to the best location based on their uh, geographical uh, IP address or uh, geo boundaries or kind of uh, local governance laws. Depending upon all those things, you can make some appropriate filters. And then if you don't want to set up and manage a content distribution network, you don't want to provide the scalability and the performance of your applications is more important, then you can go ahead and start using these kind of services. So here is the service components that make up CloudFront. Uh, when I say distribution, think of what is the data that you are going to distribute. That is what a distribution means. It might be a static website, it might be a media file, it might be some images, it might be some music files, it could be any of them. So that when you're saying I'm going to create a distribution in CloudFront, uh, think of it as the data that you want to distribute. And when you are talking about origins, it is from where you are picking up all this data. Origins can be your uh, EC2 servers, on-premise servers, or some other third-party storage, which can be reachable over an IP address, or it can be even your S3 bucket also. So all of these places can act as an origin for your distribution. And behavior is how you want your content to uh, be viewed on the CloudFront service. Say, for example, if they are authenticated, where you want to send the request, if they are an unauthenticated or unauthorized user, how you want to send that request. Or if you want to do some more processing on that request because that request is assigned with a certain keys, might be a short-lived URL. Say, for example, a password request URL. All of those password requests come you are will come with a pre-signed time window and if you click on it after a certain time window You will be shown to a page saying that this URL is not valid <clears throat> So all those behaviors you can create and then restrictions errors and tags obviously just as the name says uh, You can create multiple restrictions based on IP addresses or you can restrict entire geography say I don't want to distribute my content to North Korea or China It is also possible if you want to restrict your content uh, based on uh, corporate IP addresses that is also possible and it is also possible to set up customized error messages say somebody is trying to hack into your website and trying to look for content which is not there or trying to set up some mischievous activities you can have a customized error page to catch all those uh, different activities and show them a default page and then each of your content can be having its own meta tags metadata tags this will enable you to calculate the cost associated with your CloudFront distribution. Uh, so the, uh, when you are talking about web application firewalls, uh, this is quite an uh, interesting concept uh, which is getting very, very popular in the recent days. And this is quite advanced in nature as well because you are going to set up a firewall for your application layer based on URL tagging. And each URL will have a sub, uh, sub say for example, my root domain 
slash my website slash login so if you are having these parameters then i will do certain actions say for example corporate network has to come from the source ip has to be only from these ip addresses and if the source ip address is this an authentication request has to be sent to this destination ip address so i can set up some complex firewall rules and either accepted traffic or rejected traffic so this is a, a completely new service this is in addition to the restrictions that cloudfront provides so you can do it in multiple ways and the firewall or url based restriction that i gave you is just one example it can do a lot more than that when you are talking about edge locations uh, this is the different uh, points where your actual content resides in the map and amazon has recently changed the architecture of edge location so that it causes costs you very less money whereas you can move large content very easily to different edge locations i'll show you in a brief moment how that happens the price classes amazon also gives you a choice of how much content uh, how much money you are willing to pay for distributing your content say i want to distribute my content only to american region uh, because all my customers are from north america and south america so i will distribute only to the americas so you pay lesser cost or uh, you say that i want to cover both americas and europe you pay a little bit more cost for more geography or you can say rest of the world and i'm happy to pay as much as required to cover the entire world so different price classes are available to choose when you are distributing your content so little bit more in detail on each of the, some of those topics distributions as i said it is the entry point to your content itself uh, and any type of content is possible to be distributed static dynamic streaming anything is possible and each of your content will have this unique url this is as i said this is the entry point and when you create a cloud front uh, distribution you will get a url which is something like this alphanumeric uh, dot cloudfront dot net but it is not very friendly uh, to easy to remember instead of my sites dot com if you give an alphanumeric uh, like x1 z2 y3 dot cloudfront dot net no customer will come to your website so what typically the people do is they will use a service called route 53 or you can use any other third party dns service also and forward your traffic to this so you will create something nice and simple like origin.mysite.com and internally forward your traffic to this uh, cloud front distribution and amazon allows this uh, forwarding because it recognizes the need to have a, a very friendly url in the front end and then it will support that and it supports both http and https also so if you don't have your own certificates amazon will provide you a certificates free of cost and you can go ahead and use them without any uh, too much complex configurations all you have to do check box and say that start distributing my content in https so that is what a distributions does for you let us go ahead and see what are origins as i said um, in the bottom of your image is uh, more easier to understand the this is the cloud front icon so the cloud front can pick up data from an s3 bucket or an ec2 instance or any application that is uh, sitting behind an elastic load balancer so what you do is you just point your uh, cloud front to the elastic load balancer domain name and it will automatically forward to any application which is sitting behind this load balancer and finally you can also configure your cloud front to set it to a custom origin nothing but let us say your corporate website is in your corporate data center which is on, on premise then you can configure it to send it to your custom ip addresses that is also possible to do that so all of these different origins are accepted as a source for your content that is what origins mean about and uh, next thing is edge locations where you want to distribute your content uh, say here think of it as an origin not as a custom origin so this is where all your data is we are talking about the architecture on the left hand side and all your data is if your data is 1 kb 10 kb 1 mb you can easily move the data to 100 plus locations all across the globe Uh, the latency and the speed with which you can move your data is really fast but still amazon takes about 5 to 10 minutes to set up your uh, cloud front uh, if you are distributing your content to all the edge locations in the world but uh, think of your data in case of a netflix or uh, some other streaming service each movie will be something like 1 uh, terabyte because we are talking about multiple sizes for multiple devices a tab will have a different size format and then a uh, desktop and hd tv uhd tv all of them will have different formats and depression different i'm sorry 
different compression ratios. So you will have multiple files and all those files have to be moved to all those edge locations. So if I want to move it, so I'm talking about moving one terabyte to each of those locations. So if I say five, I need to move five terabytes from my source. So that is going to be a huge amount of bandwidth cost on each and every time I want to distribute some content. So what I Amazon thought is this is great, but not really the best. So what they did is in every region locally, they created one more uh, edge look cache. As you can see here, they created something called edge cache in that uh, local region and your content gets distributed only to your edge cache on your cost. So this bandwidth is charged for you and the bandwidth of uh, moving this from here to here. That is a typical edge locations is uh, born by Amazon and they move, migrate it internally. Uh, so you don't have to worry about how fast it goes from there and how much time it will take and how much data I'm sending, how much cost is going to incur. So this regional edge cache has improved the speed of uh, distributing content all over the globe. And uh, people are really happy about this regional edge cache uh, solution that Amazon is offering. So that is one thing. And when we're talking about uh, error page and restriction, as I said, the GUI is very, very simple. Uh, instead of talking a lot, I can show it to you in five minutes. You can whitelist or blacklist which country you want to allow your content uh, or you can have additional charge. I mean, this is provided free of cost. You don't have to pay any additional charges for doing this whitelisting or blacklisting. And once again, you can decide what kind of error pages you want to show. Even then your page is not available. Instead of showing a core not four, you can fool your browser to think that uh, you are sending an HTTP 200 message saying you look for an ABC page, but I don't have that page, but take this page and this is the return code. Everything is fine for you. Just think of uh, Facebook or uh, Google. When was the last time you were really seen a 404 page when you're browsing for something? It happens very rarely because they hide those error messages and give out a custom page saying that you can try these content instead of leaving my page. So those kind of things are also possible here. So let's move forward. Uh, so here is a web application firewall that I was uh, speaking about and it acts at the layer seven. If you're familiar with the OSA seven layers, uh, WAF or in short, this is web application firewall this is in short is called as WAF and it acts at the top level HTTP, HTTPS level that is at the protocol, those protocol levels and application levels. So you can have a lot of control here. Just a simple set of rules has been mentioned here. Say whether it is that somebody is trying to scrape my content, just copying it and storing it because you will not read 10,000 pages in one second. So if somebody IPRS is requesting for 10,000 pages in one second or one millisecond, I know that, uh, that somebody is trying to just copy my content. And another one is cross-site scripting and HTTP flood. Nothing but um, they are appearing to send the content from some other website, but they are actually not doing that. Say if, uh, Facebook login, they might give you a request which appears to be from Facebook login, but they might be sitting in some other country and making a request which looks like that. And HTTP flood, uh, sending a lot of requests when not meaning to really read that response from that request so that your website is flooded and legitimate traffic is not allowed. So all of these uh, rules you can configure in your WAF. Uh, this is all really high end uh, for any entry level. You will not be most probably doing it, but if you have necessity, then you can go ahead and do this. As you can see here, only a valid user is uh, traffic is sent forward to the uh, origin, whereas your attackers are stopped at the WAF level itself. So that is on WAF ACLs. So here is a simple architecture of how exactly CloudFront <clears throat> looks like. Let us break down the uh, big pieces into smaller ones. Let us focus on the left hand side. So here on the left hand side, you can see two big boxes. One is uh, marked as AWS. So the top level box says the resources that are residing in Amazon. The bottom box says that the content is residing in an on-premise data center. So you can configure a CloudFront location with both or either or also that is also possible. So it is not necessary that if you set up one, you cannot set up the other. So you can pick up content from both of them. And you can see here multiple origins are showcased. Just for an example, you can pick up content from EC2 directly or you can pick up content from your S3 bucket or you can pick up from ELB or some 
custom origin sites on your on-premise. So this is the icon for your uh, distribution, if I remember correctly. So that distribution sends the data to your regional edge cache, which gets distributed to all other edge locations as shown here. So this is where your web application firewall comes into picture. Any request, let us say, coming from this side. So this will hit your web, uh, um, edge location and then it will go ahead and hit your WAF to see whether you are uh, approved, whether you are authorized. Then if you are authorized, then a response will be sent back. So this is how a data flow or an architecture for CloudFront looks like. And of course, I have shown here a DOT 53, which is a DNS service. So as an end user, you will most probably by typing in this URL, cdn.mysite.com, and your DNS service will translate it into something like abccloudfront.net, and your browser will redirect it to your edge location. So that is what happens.